What is up guys, Sharpen here and today's tutorial was voted on my Discord server, a series of short and useful tips. If you want to vote for what kind of content I make, be sure to join the Discord server yourself, the invite link is in the description. Now I won't keep you waiting any longer, here is 11 short but useful tips for any Minimator user. Enjoy! You can make a nice trails effect, slash onion skinning, slash after image, slash motion blur in a very easy fashion. Taking your already done animation, duplicate the character, select all of their keyframes, put them one frame backwards, lower the alpha down to about 25%. Also increase the render depth by one so it doesn't glitch out. And depending on how many layers you want, repeat the process till you're happy. Remember to constantly increase the render depth by one. When you're done, your character will leave a trail. Okay, let's say you have a big project with a lot of keyframes, a lot of action. I'm gonna use Divided as an example, see lots of people walking around, lots of stuff going on. If you want to navigate better, simply use your middle mouse button. You can drag the timeline around as you see right here. It's a huge time saver when you're working on a project and it's just great. Note, I have figured this out all by myself, with no help from anyone whatsoever. Ha 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 ha! If you want to make a nice cave lighting, you need to layer the lights down. What I've done so far is separate the bright from the non-bright parts of the block. I've explained that in my selective glow tutorial. The link will be in the description. As for the layering lights though, we need to add a point light, lock it on the torch, put it in the cap, increase the fade size so it's more smooth. In the middle, fire is usually white, then it turns yellow, then orange, then red. We're going to do the same thing with the lighting. Let's say the torch is 200 units strong, and the darkest color is going to be the same color as the darkest part of the torch. Duplicate this point light, and the next color in the spectrum is yellow. Its range is a bit smaller, so it's closer in. Let's say 150, or maybe a little less. Duplicate this once again, make it completely white, and this range fits in the very center. The outer color could be a bit darker, but looking at this from afar, this looks like a nice torch. And if you take a look at this render, this is a pretty decent cave lighting to be done under 5 minutes. This could obviously look better if you take more time for adjustments. If you want to make a nice gunshot effect, you can do so with the use of textures and lights. What I've done here is used a gunshot texture and applied some glow to it. Once you render it, it looks nicer. I've also used some lights to make the gunshot more realistic. The lights values go from 0 to 400 and then fade back down to 0. I've used 3 lights because one of them is orange, one of them is yellow, one of them is white and their range values keep dropping the lower they go. That said, this looks pretty decent. Okay, if you want to make a nice camera shake, just do the following. At the point of impact, go two frames forward with the camera and slightly move it. Then again, then again. Then keep moving it less and less until the point where you don't move it at all. Playing this back, you got a nice camera shake. You can make a realistic lava source with the help of volumetric lighting. If you don't know how volumetric lighting works, I have a great tutorial for you. Just click the eye in the corner and go see it right now. So in the project, besides Obsidian, I have three crucial components that make this scene so awesome. So there's actual lava, particles, but then we come across this shine texture. If I make it stop only rendering glow, you will see that it's actually a matte texture on a cube. Now if I make this only render glow, it appears volumetric. If you want to make this texture yourself, again you can watch my volumetric lighting tutorial, but I will include a download link for all the lighting textures in the description of this video. Then we have two point lights to layer the light, as shown in a previous tip, and another glow texture which is called specular, even though this is not a specular lighting. If I make it stop glowing, you will see it's literally just a radial gradient. If I make this glow again and only render glow, it adds more light to the lava source. If you have already applied a position to a certain object in your animation, but then realize you need to put it in a folder, hence messing up the rotation point, there's a simple trick that will save you. Select your object and click on this copy icon, and then put all the values back to zero. Then select the folder and click on the paste icon. You basically transfer the position from this object to the folder. Happy animating! If you want to create a powerful energy aura around this guy, and yes, I'm too lazy to make an animation, let's just deal with an awkward pose, I first recommend you add a furious particle spawner around him, and I do have a particle tutorial, but it's pretty old, so if you want me to make a new one, just suggest it and I'll get on it. Now open up the editor, 
take on orbit attractor. So now the particles will orbit their attractor. In the timeline of the particle creator, in the particles tab, there is an attractor option. Let's make Steve the attractor, so now the particles will be drawn to Steve. Now the attractor barely has any effect, so let's raise the force on the attractor. I've also increased the particle count, so now they're more visible. Take on glow, only render glow. Now add a sphere. Position the sphere inside of him. Scale it into an egg shape, make it red and make it glow. Only render glow. The glow color can be reduced. Duplicate the sphere and scale it up. Duplicate the sphere again and scale it up again. Decrease all the glow values. You can make the inner layers lighter. And finally, select all of your spheres, make them be affected by wind. Open the backgrounds tab, tweak the wind. If you add a nice camera shake and also some animation, this will look like a powerful energy aura. If you want to animate tentacles, yes, I'm sorry, this was not my idea. And please go for more realistic ones because this was just low effort. You can do that very simply. First, all of your tentacle components need to be locked on one another, creating a chain-like structure. Then, select all of them and move forward. Bend them however you wish. Now we want our tentacle to be more swirly and gross, so let's select the second half of the components and let's exaggerate the moves a little bit, so it curves back down. Do that for all keyframes. Then select all of your keyframes and give them an ease in and out transition. When you play this back, it won't look the best because we still need to add the overlap. Leave the first row of keyframes as they are. Select all the bottom ones and let's delay them by two ticks. Select the next row, delay them by two more, etc. If we play this now, well this looks a lot more like a tentacle. If you want to make a realistic winter biome, simply adding it in is not enough. We must tweak the background options. The background options can achieve a lot of things when it comes to realistic biomes. For an example, keep the sunlight color white. The ambient color is too dark, let's make it more light and bluish. Perfect! Next, let's add some fog to the scenery. Make the sky white, or at least whiter. Now add some snow and this instantly looks much more like a snow biome than it did before. That way you can make some nice snowy mountains. Make swamps more disgusting. Make the beach a lot warmer place. Or make for some really nice underwater effects. Final tip, move the character. Yes, I'm showing you Divided 4 spoilers, but since there's no audio, not much is spoiled anyway. My point, constantly move the character, all components need to be moving at all time. Real life creatures are constantly moving, it's only natural. If you want your animation to look realistic, you have to do the same. Thank you for watching, that was 11 useful tips for Mindimeter users. If you liked the video, drop a like on it and consider subscribing, cause I'm all about animation. Now thank you for watching and stay sharp.